So, in the last lecture, we discussed about translation plus rotation. So, this is very special point. This is a point, I can call this point of contact. If uh, the, this is a disc, this is a wheel and the wheel is kept on surface, then this wheel is in contact with the surface at this point. So, this is called point of contact. So, I can say the velocity at the point of contact, velocity at the point of contact Vp is Vca minus omega r, is Vca minus omega r, right? Velocity at the point of contact is Vca minus omega r. Now here can arise three cases. One is the case when Vcm is less than omega r. The second case can be Vcm greater than omega r. And third case will be Vcm equal to omega r. So this is a case we call it backward slipping because in this case the velocity at the point of contact will be in in the direction in left direction in backward direction and in this case I'll call this as forward slipping and this case can be called uh, I can call it rolling and the most important case, this is important case. <clears throat> now I'll discuss them one by one. I'll discuss them, these three terms, one by one. What is backward slipping? What is forward slipping? What is rolling? When do you have all these cases? See, the first case is backward slipping. In this case, your VCM is less than omega. So the velocity at the point of contact with negative or you can say the velocity of the point of contact is in backward direction. I'll give you a practical example when you have this case. I'm here discussing backward slipping. I discuss here with you backward slipping. See, this is the case, uh, you have this case, suppose uh, you start riding your vehicle. You start driving a vehicle. You start your vehicle in that case, when you start your vehicle, what exactly you do? What exactly you can do? It just give the wheel omega. Wheel is given omega. Say, if I draw a wheel over here, when you start driving a vehicle, in your hand, you have omega. You have the engine with you and it can just rotate the wheel. You have the engine, piston moves forward and backward and through crankshaft mechanism you are able to rotate the wheel. If suppose the surface on which it is kept, suppose this is the surface on which it is kept, if suppose this surface is frictionless, what will happen to a vehicle? I just drawn one wheel of your vehicle. Similarly, you have three more wheels. So, if it is frictionless, what will happen to your vehicle? If you give omega, you start your vehicle, you give it omega. If it is frictionless, what will happen? The wheel will keep on rotating and the vehicle won't move. The wheel will rotate, but the vehicle won't move. Right? Because for a vehicle to translate, there must be some external force acting on the wheel. There must be some external force acting in the vehicle. So if the surface is frictionless, the wheel will only rotate and your vehicle will be at the same same place without moving forward. In your uh, speedometer, you will be seeing the vehicle moving at say 40 km per hour because you have omega. So, the speedometer is going to show you the velocity, but then your vehicle is not translating in fact. 
because there is no friction when there is no friction there is no external force acting on the wheel so vehicle is not going to move if there is a friction what will happen as you ride the vehicle as you give it omega you just give it omega you can't give it a vcm you can't give it vcm sitting inside the vehicle you can give the velocity center uh, you can give the velocity to the center mass only when you push it from outside right when you are outside the vehicle you can give it vcm in that case you can give vcm but you cannot give it vcm sitting inside so you just give omega omega is in your hand you have the control over omega but as you give omega at the point of contact the velocity at the point of contact lies towards left because your vcm is zero initially your vcm is zero initially so the velocity at the point of contact is towards left towards left the point of contact slips in backward direction it slips in backward direction so in that case if there is a friction the friction going to act on the wheel in forward direction is going to act on the wheel in forward direction at the point of contact because friction by its nature opposes any kind of relative motion friction opposes any kind of relative motion since point of contact P is slipping with respect to the ground with respect to the surface in backward direction so friction will act in forward direction friction is going to act in forward direction and this friction leads to VCM this friction will lead to VCM this will increase VCM this will accelerate the wheel by this acceleration F by M F by M and uh, slowly what will happen VC will increase Omega will fall a bit because this is going to create a torque which will lead to decrease in Omega so Omega will fall VC will increase and a time will come when friction is going to match VCM it's going to increase VCM and make it equal to Omega R that's the objective because when VCM is Omega R this point of contact is no longer slipping in that case when VCM is less than Omega R this point of contact is slipping in backward direction so friction acted and this friction increasing VCM and making it equal to Omega R so the friction is a playing a role of matching VCM with Omega R now increase omega, friction will still match VC with omega. If you go on increasing omega, friction will continue to act and will continue to increase VCM and match VCM to omega R. Right. And in usual case, the time taken by friction in order to match VCM, in order to increase VCM to omega R is not very large. It's very small because the friction between the wheel and the road on which the vehicle moves is very high see the road is deliberately made very rough the wheel the tire of the wheel is also deliberately made very rough you do not uh, have smooth tires when when the when your tires become smooth when your wheel becomes smooth you just change the tire change the tire right because there we need a sufficient friction between wheel and the ground wheel and the surface so that the moment I increase omega friction should increase VCM in no time in no time is in very short span of time as we increase omega the friction should be so high that it should increase VCM to omega R value in a very short span of time so that we do not have the feel of slipping we just feel like as we are increasing omega VCM is also increasing and we have a feel that it's we who are providing VCM, it's we who are driving. We don't drive, we just rotate the wheel. The friction drives. Friction drives your vehicle. Friction takes your vehicle in forward direction. It's not we who take the wheel in forward direction or the vehicle in forward direction. We don't drive in forward direction because we are driving. We are not driving. It's friction which is driving. So in order to make the friction large, your wheel is made rough the road is very, made very rough so that we talk about a grip grip of the wheel on the road is very high the friction is very high because the moment you increase omega friction acts and it increases VCM to omega R value you go on increasing omega R friction will go on increasing VCM right so in the whole process 
the point of contact is slipping in for a backward direction. So as it slip, as you increase omega, then see you have reached your VCM has reached this omega value, and now, then you are suddenly increasing omega r. In that case, for a moment, for a time period, this point of contact will be slipping in backward direction and a friction will act and this friction is going to raise this VCM and make it equal to omega R value. Right? So that's the case of backward slipping. When you ride the vehicle, when you start the vehicle, when you accelerate your vehicle, for a time period, for a short span of time, your wheel undergoes a backward slipping. And this backward slipping, uh, the friction will act forward and this will increase VCM and make it equal to omega R. Point, point equal to omega r value. Have the feel of backward slipping when <coughs> your wheel or a vehicle is stuck in mud, right? Suppose your vehicle is stuck in mud, what happens? You go on increasing omega r, omega, but friction when your vehicle is stuck in mud, in that case, <coughs> uh, the friction between wheel and the surface is very, very small. So that friction is not enough to match to increase your VCM to omega value and so wheel rotates more and moves less. Wheel rotates more and moves less. Right? So that's the case of backward slipping. Now let's move to forward slipping. Let's take the case of forward slipping. Say I make it forward slipping. When you start your vehicle, the vehicle, the wheel undergoes a backward slipping. Now, I'll take the case of forward slipping. In forward slipping, VCM is greater than omega r and uh, your velocity, velocity at the point of contact is in this direction. So now this is not a direction of friction, this is a direction of velocity, this is a direction of velocity, Vp. So when your VCM is greater than omega r, your point of contact tends to slip in forward direction and now your friction acts in backward direction. The P point of contact tends to, it slips in forward direction and <clears throat> in order to oppose the slipping, friction acts in backward direction. I'll give you a practical example. Suppose <coughs> you are riding a vehicle with VCM equal to omega r, right? Now, suppose <coughs> you suddenly, you pull the brake. When you pull the brake, what actually you do? You do not have control over VCM, right? You have the control over omega r. So when you pull the brake, your omega r is falling. You are decreasing omega. Your brake so you, you pull the brake, brake has got a brake so mechanism and brake so press against the wheel and it decreases omega r value. As omega r value decreases, then your VCM is greater than omega r. VCM, omega r becomes less than VCM. So for a short span of time, for a time period, the point of contact slips in forward direction because VCM is higher than omega r for that time period because you have, you have decreased omega r value. The omega r value decreases and VCM becomes higher than omega r. In that case, the point of contact slips in forward direction and as it slips in forward direction, the friction force F acts in backward direction and that creates a deacceleration in the vehicle, in the wheel and deacceleration produces F by M. So what this, DX, what this friction is going to do? Friction is going to decrease this VCM and increase a bit this omega R and make them equal again. So as you decrease omega R, the friction force is making VCM also fall and it will match your VCM with omega r. It will match the velocity of center of mass with omega r because it will, it will, friction force is going to decrease VCM also. Friction force is going to decrease VCM also and VCM will fall, it will fall and become equal to omega r again. If you pull the brake again, omega r still falls and friction force will act in backward direction. I will decrease VCM, make it again equal to omega r. So this go on taking place. So as you pull the brake for a moment, the vehicle, vehicle 
slips in forward direction and as vehicle slips in forward direction friction will act in backward direction and this friction is going to match again vc with omega but during that time period your vehicle is slipping in forward direction you might have experienced this case in rainy season in rainy season uh, see usually in dry season you don't have a feel of slipping in you didn't don't have a free feel of forward slipping why because the moment you decrease your omega friction between wheel and the surface is so high that it takes very small time in decreasing vc and make it equal to omega so you don't have a feel of it you feel as if the moment you are in decreasing moment you are pulling the brake your vc is also fallen because the time taken of friction in order to decrease vc and make it equal to omega is very very small you have the feel of it when you pull the brake suddenly you pull the brake hard and it, and suddenly suppose you are moving with very high velocity and you suddenly pull the brake very hard in that case what will happen is omega will fall to very small value omega will decrease at a very rapid rate but vcm cannot decrease at that rapid rate because vcm can decrease vcm can decrease or the rate at which vcm decreases is decided by the friction right so if you decrease your omega to very small value friction will take its time to match vcm to that small value of omega r suppose this is 40 km per hour this is also 40 km per hour and you suddenly pull the brake and make it 5 km per hour then there is a deficit of 35 km per hour so in order to match this gap you are in order to breeze this gap in order to make this vcm fall from 40 km per hour to 5 km per hour the friction will take some time and during that time a vehicle slips in forward direction you have the feel that is your vehicle has slipped right it becomes very dangerous when it is a rainy season here the road is wet when the road is wet the friction between a road and the wheel becomes small relatively compared to dry season so in that case if you pull the brake hard then since friction is small it will take sufficiently longer time in order to match vc with omega r in that case you have a good feeling of slipping and sometimes it is dangerous also because you have the habit, you have the experience or you have more experience of running your vehicle in dry season and you have an idea that uh, the time taken by friction in order to match VC with omega r but that time time interval, the idea of that time interval which you have in dry season may be misleading in rainy season because you have the same idea that say if I pull the brake I can travel to that distance and my vehicle will stop but usually sometimes in rainy season the friction is small and it takes longer time so your vehicle moves to a longer distance and in that case you may meet an accident because you have the feeling that by the time I reach that distance some distance in forward direction my vehicle is going to stop but it takes a longer time and your vehicle need to move more distance in that case you have a danger of meeting an accident so usually it is advised in the rainy season to drive at a slower pace at a slower velocity so that if it is required you are able to in decrease this vcm because it will take a longer time for vcm to decrease in rainy season because the friction is fallen so even if you pull the brake hard your vcm is not going to decrease in the start short span of time you can decrease omega you can make it omega zero in no time but you cannot make vcm zero in no time right so because friction has its own pace friction has its own pace in dry season it's not a problem but in wet rainy season it may be a problem friction may take a longer time or even in dry season if you pull the brake hard your vehicle slips your vehicle slips you have this feeling it make it make some sound over here the vehicle slip it's called skidding so that's the case of forward slipping that's the case of forward slipping and now I'll discuss the most important case that is rolling that is rolling let's see this case rolling now we are going to see the most important case that is rolling in case of rolling <coughs> your VCM is equal to omega r and that's the most natural case VCM is equal to omega r and uh, when VCM is equal to omega r what do you have what is the velocity at the point of contact? Velocity at the point of 
contact. The velocity of the point of contact is Vcm minus omega r and that is zero. Velocity at the point of contact is zero. Or you can say the point of contact is uh, the point of contact point of contact is at instantaneous rest. The point of contact lies at instantaneous rest. What does it mean? What does this line mean? In case of rolling, the point of contact is at instantaneous rest. What is the meaning of this line? Let's try to understand what does this, this line mean? <coughs> the point of contact is at instantaneous rest. See, it means, see, any every point, every point on the wheel on some day will become point of contact. A time will come, a day will come when every point on the point of contact, every point on the periphery of the wheel is going to become a point of contact. Right? Is going to become a point of contact. It, they are destined to become a point of contact. Every point has in destiny to become a point of contact. And they become point of contact for just one instant. They become point of contact for just one instant. And when they become point of contact, the velocity at that point reduces to zero. So the velocity at this point is highest. Vcm plus omega r, which in this case will be twice of Vcm, because Vcm and omega r are equal. So, as this point moves, as the wheel moves, this point comes over here, the velocity keep on falling, falling and falling, and go on decreasing, and decreases zero when this point P comes over here, and then again start increasing, goes to maximum at this point. So, every point on some time will become a point of contact and the moment it becomes a point of contact the velocity at that point of contact is going to be zero right because so at that point when the, when they see the point of when any point on the wheel becomes point of contact it is at rest so you can see in this case that uh, you have corresponding i can draw a corresponding point on the road also p1 dash P2 dash, P3 dash, P4 dash, P5 dash. So as the wheel moves, P1, when P1 will become point of contact, it will come in contact with P1 dash, P2 will come in contact with P2 dash, P3 will come in contact with P3 dash, P4 will come in contact with P4 dash, and P5 will come in contact with P5 dash. So the moment they come in contact, there is no slipping at this point. There is no slipping at this point. Here, slipping is not occurring at this point. The point of contact, whosoever become a point of contact, it is at rest. Whose, whatever point becomes a point of contact, it is at rest for that instant. That's why I call it instantaneous rest. That's why I'm calling it instantaneous rest. Whichever point becomes a point of contact, that comes to rest for that particular instant. That's why we are calling it instantaneous rest. Instantaneous rest. That's why we are calling it instantaneous rest. The point of contact is at instantaneous rest. I'll give you an example. Say in your childhood you might have uh, um, rode a bicycle. You might have uh, rode a bicycle. We are riding a bicycle in our childhood. right? You ride a bicycle and uh, I don't know oh, what is your background. If suppose you are from village or you are from some town where the road is not uh, good. Road is, uh, you know, it's muddy road. It's muddy road. It's not metal road. It's not pitch and a very smooth road. It's a road which is 
consisting of sand and mud and everything, right? It's not uh, a good road. So, when you are riding a bicycle, your uh, tire, the bicycle has got a wheel and wheel is covered with a rubber tire, right? A rubber tire has got some design. When you ride a bicycle, the design on the rubber tire comes on the road. You might have seen it. The design of the rubber tire comes on the road. Means as you ride the bicycle, the designs which the tire of your wheel has is left on the road. Wheel leaves its impression. Wheel leaves its design on the road. So you just tell me if the two surfaces are coming in contact and one surface is leaving the impression on the second surface, when it can happen? Can it happen when the two surfaces are in motion? Or it can happen only when the two surfaces are rest with respect to each other. You might have used a stamp. When you make a stamp, suppose this is your stamp, you put the stamp vertically downward, right? You, you When you put a stamp on any paper, you put the stamp vertically down. So, when you put the stamp, when you press the stamp, do you have any relative motion between the paper and the stamp? No. Do you put the stamp like this? Do you put the stamp something like you move the stamp on the paper? No. If you want the impression of the stamp to be on the paper, when they are in contact, they have to be at rest. They have to be at rest. So in the same way, when the wheel is leaving an impression, suppose we have something like uh, a pointed kind of thing, it will leave a, 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 a a depression over here. If you have some pointed edges over here, it will leave a depression over here. So it's leaving the impression. It can leave the impression only when it is at rest with respect to the surface. Anything, anything can leave the impression on any other surface. Only when they when they come in contact, they must be at rest. Right? If you slap someone. Your four fingers are on the cheek. It is not. So it will be, you leave the impression of your fingers on the cheek only when your hand, your, your palm and the cheek, they are at rest with respect to each other when they come in contact. Right? When they come in contact, if you slip the fingers on the cheek, it won't be leaving the impression on anybody check. Don't do that. Okay. So it must be it must be it must be at rest with respect to the surface. That's what we are understanding. When the two surfaces are coming in contact, one surface can leave any impression of the second surface only when when they come in contact they must be at rest. So it means when you're riding a wheel, when you're riding a bicycle, if it is leaving the impression it can happen only when the point of contact and the surface on which you are riding must be in contact and it must be at rest with respect to each other. So that's an example of uh, rolling and if uh, your uh, sometimes your bicycle slips in rainy season or something like that, when it slips you can find that it won't be leaving its design for the distance over which it slips. If the vehicle slips over some distance, then it won't leave the impression. The impression won't be left on the road. The impression of the wheel is not left on the road. If the, vehicle, if the wheel slips for certain positions, for certain distance, if the wheel slips, it doesn't leave its impression. Like when you are walking with a wet uh, feet, when your feet is wet and you walk on certain surface, you leave the impression of your feet on the surface, on the uh, floor. If the floor is wet or if your feet is wet or if I color your feet with uh, some, some, you have some color, you put a color on your feet and you walk on the, on the floor, in that case you leave the impression of your feet on the floor. 
But if suppose you slip for certain distance, then the distance over which you slip, your feet does not leave any impression on that of over that distance. And anybody can see that the person has slipped from this point to this point. Because your impression of the feet won't be there. It will be just smooth kind of impression which just shows that you have slipped. So that's the case when your feet is in relative motion with the floor and during that time you don't leave the impression of the feet. When your wheel of the bicycle is slipping over the road, it won't be leaving the impression. Because in that case, the point of contact is slipping over the surface. The point of contact is not at rest with respect to the surface. If you move your stamp in this direction, it won't be leaving the impression on the paper. Because now your stamp is having a relative motion with respect to the paper. So in that case, it won't be leaving the impression. It won't be leaving the impression on the paper. Right. So um, that's a good example of... Uh, I, I just want to convince myself that in order for one surface to leave impression on the other surface, they must be at rest with respect to each other. They must be lying at rest with respect to each other. So it means if a, if a wheel is leaving impression, it must be at rest with respect to the, the road. Okay. I'll take one more example. Suppose, um, let me uh, go to some history part. See, Wheel is uh, uh, considered to be the most important uh, invention of mankind. Wheel is going to be the most important invention of the mankind. I hope you agree with it. But do you think that wheel was invented in one day? Or somebody came up with the idea suddenly that let's make a round wheel? We don't know. But say if I guess, I feel that uh, wheel would not have been made in one day. The human being might have tried some different thing also. Like say, if I just make a story and just say you that, uh, if say I tell you a story of the wheel, suppose, <coughs> and this is just not a fact, this is just a story. Suppose human being might have thought in the beginning that this can be a wheel and wheel is very important because uh, in uh, usually in, in beginning in the beginning of mankind paleolithic and neolithic age uh, the man was nomad they were not doing agriculture so they were not settled at one place they used to move from one place to other place right they were living a nomadic life so Quite often they had to move within a month or a year to different places, right, so that they can find uh, some new resources, some new trees, and, or they can eat and all that, and they can just finish and they can move to the next place. So they have, they might have to carry lots of goods, lots of uh, their belongings. So in earlier days they might have been carrying it overhead. But um, they might have invented a wheel and then wheel would have helped them to carry the things from one place to other place. So if I assume that this initial wheel would have been a square shaped, suppose if it is square shaped. In that case, how can you move this vehicle if, you, if your wheel is of a square shape? You'll push the vehicle, the wheel is going to topple about this point. Toppling means this point will be at rest and the whole rigid body is going to topple about this point. Whole rigid body is going to topple about this point, this point. And as it topples, this point will come over here and then it will topple over this point, right? This point will come with the contact. This face will come in the contact with the surface and then you keep on pushing it. It will topple about this point, then it will topple about this point, then it will topple about this point. So, the wheel involves, if it is square wheel, it will involve toppling. The moving a vehicle will involve toppling about every point, toppling about every point. Then some someone would have came up with the idea that why it is square or, or it may so have happened that uh, these corners of the wheel would have got uh, uh, filed up. This corner of the wheel would have got smoothened and uh, the wheel would have become something like this. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe. 
that uh, the corners of the wheel may have got smooth and uh, the wheel would have become would have become like something like this maybe may not be or maybe some brilliant person would have come and made a, a round wheel but i don't think such a brilliancy can be expected if we don't see a wheel if you see the wheel it looks quite obvious that it's a wheel but if you don't have seen a wheel discovering a wheel would be a very tough task as far as i see when you see the things obvious it looks easy for you but then if you don't see it then the obvious shape of the wheel won't come to your mind so easily so i think this would have been the case like the wheel the ends would have got smooth end and it would have got to the size and man would have felt happy that it's easier to move this object compared to this object the wheel would have graduated from a square shape to this shape octagon right it's octagon so i think it's easier to move compared to this wheel now the mankind would have been more happy that oh well it has got filed up so we have got to a better shape because it's easier to move now it's toppling about this point it's toppling about this point this point will come this face will come to the ground and then we will topple about this point and this face will come on the surface and then you will topple about this point so it go on toppling about every vertex now you have eight vertices so when you make two pi one full rotation you have toppled eight times right the size of wheel has not increased because uh, obviously the the wood is same of wood is of same size in fact i have the same size of the wood and now i am finally i am making more vertices so i have increased number of vertices and the wheel this is a better wheel compared to the square wheel and it is toppling out every of its vertex now since uh, if by increasing the number of vertex we are finding that the wheel has become better it's easier to topple this object compared to this object you can just have a real life experience with it so we have we have got a good idea the idea is if you increase number of vertices then wheel becomes better so why not to increase number of vertices to more value to more the more number of uh, say i can have a wheel of something like this i not i can increase number of vertices still more say this can be say a wheel say this would be I don't know how much better I can draw it. Say, say, this is your wheel. Like, it's much easier now. It's more easy to talk. The number of vertices has increased. Number of vertices has increased. Suppose this face is on the surface, and then it will topple about this point, and it will topple about this point. It will go on toppling about all these vertices. I think it's much better wheel compared to this octagon. I don't know how many sides it has. You can just count it. So it's easier to topple. In fact, this wheel easier to topple this wheel. So we are coming to a wonderful idea that uh, if number of vertices increases, if number of vertices increases, then the wheel becomes better. The wheel becomes better compared to the old one. So a person with a mathematical bent of mind might have said, "Why not to increase number of vertices to infinity? Why not to increase number of vertices to be infinity?" See, in every case, you are saying that the whole rigid body is toppling about this point. The, this point is at rest, and the whole uh, rigid body topples about this point. So, if suppose I increase the number of vertices to infinity, if I increase the number of vertices to infinity, what do I get? If I increase the number of vertices, what do I get? Without increasing the size of wheel, I'll get. What do I get? I get a round shaped wheel, a a disc kind of wheel, a wheel of circular kind, right? So if I increase number of vertices, 
if I increase the number of vertices, I get the set. If I increase the number of vertices to infinity, I come to this set. Okay. So that's the field we are looking for. And this is the point of contact. And uh, I can say this is also the vertices. This infinite number of vertices. Every point on the wheel can be seen as the vertex of a polygon having infinitely many sides. So every point can be seen something like a vertex. And the whole wheel can be seen as toppling about this point. The wheel can be seen as toppling about the point of contact. And a point of contact changes. The wheel topples about that point of contact. Again, point of contact changes. And wheel keeps on toppling about the point of contact. And that's called rolling. So rolling can be understood as toppling about point of contact. I can understand rolling as toppling about point of contact. I hope this example is clear to you. I can see this wheel as limiting case of the polygon where the number of vertices goes to infinity and since the wheel has been toppling about every vertex, I can see the point of contact as one of the vertex and the whole wheel is toppling about that point. So that is the case of rolling. Now it's time to go for examples.